All right, we're heading back into Wilmington, and it looks like it's starting to rain like a pain in the butt. And we're going to change out that blower motor that was shot over here at the trailer from Friday. So get on that. I was so wise and ran the refrigerant lines right in front of the blower, which is they're kind of hard to get out of the way. I put that safety switch in there. And it seems like a bad idea now. But got to change it out. Get it going again. It was running well for a short period. And what I'm guessing is the cool air off of that uh, evaporator was actually keeping the motor a little cooler than it was when I was running it fan only. It didn't do anything when I put it on fan only. It started to overheat and seize up. So I reckon that's what we're dealing with. Oh well. Let's see if we can't get it taken care of. Here's our Heil. All right, we're gonna pump down the system on this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the uh, liquid service valve. Pump all the refrigerant to the condenser if possible. And then we can uh, make our repair inside. So that's closed. This gauge will show where we are as far as pumping things down. Basically with this gauge closed, or with this uh, service port closed here, this gauge will show us the pressure at the farthest point of the system after it gets shut off. So we'll know when it reaches zero here. We should be all squared away, or close to zero. Then whenever it gets close to zero, we'll go ahead and tighten this one down, leaving all the refrigerant in the condenser. Alright, I'm going to push down the contactor. And then you'll be able to see how the pressure drops. Once it gets close to zero, we'll start tightening it down. short line set shouldn't have too much refrigerant for it. When we get to 20 we'll start. Get close. Might be too much for it. Try to get almost all of it out of here. about one pound left in there. Sorry. Just a very little bit left in there, which is good. Alright, so we're able to make our repair now. Then we can pull the vacuum and release the charge back. Okay, we'll be taking the old blower housing out to change the motor. Uh, take the old wiring out. Put some new wiring into that hole. So we'll take things out, I'll take the cap off of it. We'll slide it out here in a second after I disconnect the wires. And then get the new motor in. Capacitor and clip. And we'll be good to go. If you've watched any of the prior videos, you'll see the uh, six pin relay we talked about is in this uh, air handler here, electric furnace. And there's a sequencer as well. And it's set up the same way we talked about. We have a black wire here, which is a blower speed tab, and we have a red wire, which is a separate blower speed tab. The only thing they did differently was they have two different speeds controlled here. I had one speed controlled by a jumper, so if the heat strips are energized and the blower is not, this blue wire from the sequencer, see it right down here, sends power to the red speed tab on the motor. So it's the same thing we talked about, a little bit different. Uh, just two different speeds, a black and a red, instead of having one speed. All right, first we take out the three screws on the bracket. A lot of time they're three eighths. Get all the wiring loose here, and then I'll uh, flip it over, take the blade loose. Next thing, take this locking nut off of the uh, shaft, 
and then we use a blade puller to push the shaft out of the uh, squirrel cage. This is the blade puller. Uh, try to get the screws pretty equidistant before I set them down on the shaft. Because if it gets off center, it doesn't work as well. So you want to make sure it's pretty equidistant before you put them down there and you tighten each one of them up, one turn a piece, until they tighten up on the shaft. Then you can push it directly out without having to worry, uh, without having to worry about being off center. Okay, after you got it tightened up on the shaft there, nice and firm, put one wrench, a little locking point down here, and you can put your socket up here as long as you got the right size. Just spin it around until it pushes the, uh, the blower motor out the back. And you see after we wheel it down, and it pushes out, you just lift it up. There's our blower motor. And we can slide the other one in the other side. Alright, after we got the blower motor out, you have to take off these. I loosen up these screws and slide it out of the harness, then put the new motor into the harness, then we can set it into the squirrel cage. And next we're going to install the old harness onto the new blower motor, making sure you can use little ventilation holes as a guide, that it's nice and uh, even. Because you don't want to have the motor cocked at an odd angle, that means the shaft will be cocked and you know the blower will go all to hell. So uh, just keep in mind of that, you can measure it, but uh, they have the holes on there which usually you're able to keep pretty straight then. So we'll go ahead and put that on there and then slide it inside the squirrel cage and tighten it up. Okay, we uh, got the motor in there, tightened up to 3 8 got the ground hooked up to the chassis. The reversing plug, we're going to uh, <clears throat> use some tie straps to get all these in order once it's sitting in place. Got the capacitor hooked up, 5 microfarad Mars capacitor. The, I'm keeping that one, the one that comes with it, because you can use it for several different ratings. Since I have the specific rating I need here, I'm going to keep that one for a rainy day. So I'll flip it over, we'll put the lock nut back on the uh, shaft, and uh, we'll slide it All in. right, we slid the blower housing and blower back in there. I uh, got the wires running around out of the way, down to the electronics area. Now we're going to check and see which wire goes where, and place it on that spot. We can already see that we have the capacitor at the top, which is the brown and brown and white wire. And the capacitor is that little circle right there with the lines in it. And it's already plugged in, so we've already done that part. Uh, so next we have to choose which speed we want. We're going to pick two speeds for each side of that tap. Probably blue and yellow on this particular motor. And then white is our other line side, which is going to go to the line side of the transformer down there. Which is right here on the back side. You see that open stake on. So, and then we're going to take the blue and yellow wires, blue wire onto our fan tab here at the top. And then the next one down will be our yellow. So we go ahead and put those on there and then we can seal her back up. Okay, our blower is operational. It's got a proper rotation, a good airflow. So we're going to rebuild this cabinet and uh, get everything else put back together. Okay, we're about to start flowing nitrogen so I can re-weld those joints. Uh, I'm very happy to say my Uniweld flow meter is back in service thanks to me doing a little bit of alteration there on the bottom through the uh, safety port where it blows out if there's a high enough PSI inside. Now it's not as safe anymore and no one out there should do this, but uh, I'm able to use my flow meter now. So I repeat, no one do that. So I'm about to turn it on about five pounds of pressure, start brazing. Here we go. All right, now let's get brazing.
doesn't take very long to heat up 3 8 copper and uh, you leave heat on there too long, especially with a torch like this, it'll burn a hole right through it. And 15% silver solder runs very well, so you can kind of run it around the joint. You see this? It moves when you move the flame. You can run it right around wherever you want it to go. Hit my nozzle a little bit. See, now I'm running out of gas. Trying to make a time. See the flame getting longer like that. flame gets longer like that means you're running out of gas. <sighs> Unfortunately. Make sure you run some back behind there and that's all spring out. Let that cool down and we can check it for pressure with nitrogen. There we are. Nice clean joints around there. Doesn't take too long to heat it up. Now with oxygen settling, it gets pretty hot. So you just gotta be careful when you don't put too much heat, especially on the smaller copper. All right, we had to uh, pull the vacuum the old fashioned way because one of the O-rings in my nice hoses after I had set up my cool vacuum manifold again had shred itself so it wasn't pulling the vacuum anymore. It was leaking around the O-ring. So I did it with the old S-mans here. Took a long time. And now I'm waiting for the unit to start up. It should be any second now. Any second. Long time coming. There we go. She as she gets all geared up, we'll let her run for about, you see where we start out here. Uh, high superheat, low subcooling. Let's see where she ends up. Let's give her 15 minutes and check her again.